welcome to the lecture 4 and uh, today we will continue our discussion on how to determine the corrosion rate of a metal. So, to say what are the governing equations that can be used to compute the corrosion rate. Before we proceed on this, um, a brief recapitulation of what we discussed in the previous class will be in order. And um, towards the uh, you know the end of the class, we saw that how to predict if a metal will undergo corrosion in a given environment that we saw that right. And we also saw that if the metal is under equilibrium, it is not going to corrode. It will corrode only when it is deviating from the equilibrium condition. Suppose I immerse let us say iron in hydrochloric acid, you know what are the reactions right. The corrosion will occur by the oxidation of iron into a ferrous chloride and the H plus ions in the solution will get reduced to hydrogen gas evolution. These two uh, equations you know one is an oxidation other is reduction process. So, before we looking at the the governing equation for the oxidation of the iron and the oxidation of uh, yeah, iron or similar metals and the reduction of the reducing species like H plus or metal ions anything can happen. We were trying to discuss what an electrochemical equilibrium is. If you recollect we, we said that if I am going to construct an electrochemical equilibrium, let us say if I am going to uh, dip zinc, zinc in zinc ions. zinc ions. We said that there is going to be an equilibrium between the zinc ions in the solution and the metal that is immersed in the solution right. So, you define this equilibrium as zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives you zinc here. You define this equilibrium by one parameter all of you know what are the parameters which is E. E depends on what? E depends upon the activity of zinc ions in the solution. You can determine using Nernst equation. What is more happening here? What is happening here is constantly zinc ions are getting formed in the solution by oxidation and then these zinc ions will again go back and get deposited on to the metal surface. And we saw this is under equilibrium condition. For simplicity, we consider that the zinc ions are in the standard state right. Then what happens to E? E equals to E naught right and this is going to be equal to minus 0 0.763 volts in the standard state. Right, we know this. Now, we also said that the rate of zinc going as 
zinc 2 plus plus 2 electron is uh, is equal to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electron to zinc right which I would say ok. This is the rate of this reaction, this is the oxidation and this is going to be the reduction reaction. So, we say that rate of oxidation is equal to rate of reduction right and you can convert this into current right. How do you convert into current? Any of you can recollect R equals to I upon N F and right. Since the rate of forward equal to rate of backward or whatever and this current is termed as termed as exchange current density. All right. We saw this in the previous class. What is the unit of current density? Amperes per unit area, right? Okay. So, that you know that. Let me go further into this. Okay. Let me represent this graphically, right? I am going to make it a little more simpler. I am please look at I am plotting current density versus the potentials. It is relatively positive, this is relatively negative here. Why? This equilibrium, it has got two characters. One is a potential defined, second I defined by the current density, am I right? Now, for a standard state, the potential is minus 0 0.76. So, this probably let us say it is coming somewhere here, it is minus 0 0.763 volt, right? This axis now, right? It also has a current density, am I right or not? The forward reaction and backward reaction, they go equally. So, can I represent in the diagram? So, I represent in the diagram somewhere here. What is this current called? This current density is equal to I naught current density between Z 2 plus and that here. Is correct or not? Right? Agreed? I am going to now disturb this equilibrium. I disturb this equilibrium now. Let us look at the equilibrium again. What is the potential of this? The potential of this measured is equal to 0 0.763 volt with respect to standard hydrogen electrode. Now, what I am going to do, okay, I am writing this equilibria here again. Z10 2 plus plus 2 electron gives you Z10 is equal to minus 0 0.763 volt. I am going to take the case 1, I am going to make this potential here minus 0 0.863 volt. I am going to make this potential minus point 
0.863 volt. How do I make it? I to make it I need one more electrode here and I need a DC source right. I just make like that. Now, what will happen? This is now made negative by using another electrode. If you make it negative, what will happen? The electrons will start flowing towards this. The electrons are flowing through this. If I make it negative, electrons flow through this. Yes? You can change the potentials, but the equilibrium will remain the same. That will be a new equilibrium potential, right? Assume that the concentration of the electrolyte zinc ions from 1 molar it has become let us say uh, 10 power minus 2 molar right. You calculate the potential. What is the potential called? Still it is called a equilibrium potential right. Is it or not? Correct or not? And use an Nernst equation. Okay. So, even there the metal is in equilibrium with the ion, but at a different potential is not it. Rate of forward reaction equal to rate of backward reaction. The exchange contents may not be the same is not it. The rate of reaction depends upon the activity of the species. So, the exchange contents may not be the same, but even at lower concentration when you change the potential right. In fact, you do not change the potential, the potential automatically get adjusted that is a new equilibrium potential. I put other way around for simplicity, I take a beaker, I take zinc ions of 1 molar concentration, I put zinc there, I measure the potential using a standard hydrogen electrode which is minus 0 0.63 volt, I pour some water into that ok. So, what will happen now? the concentration of zinc ions will decrease, it will establish a new potential. Zinc ions still will have an equilibrium with the zinc metal. The new potential is different, you can calculate using the Nernst equation. So, that is not a deviation from equilibrium, it is a new equilibrium, not same equilibrium. Am I right or not? This is different ok, but it is also an equilibrium. So, standard that is why I said what is the difference between a equilibrium potential and a standard potential? Standard potential is a special case of equilibrium potentials, the standard state, not different at all. They are in equilibrium condition. That is why I always say that when you are predicting corrosion, you please do a simple calculation of equilibrium potential using Nernst equation. Please do not go into shortcuts, right? Then use that to determine whether corrosion occurs or not. Otherwise, you jump in conclusion that minus 0.6, it has become minus 0.7. So, metal is going to corrode, it is not going to corrode at all ok. So, that is thing you should understand. Equilibrium potential is independent of the concentration of ions, independent of even the activity of metal, ion, metal on the metal. Because it is a pure metal, we consider the activity of zinc is or metal is unity. Okay. So, I think it is a good point that you raised that you should understand that. So, let us put the come back to this, I apply a potential here minus what happens? Now, what will happen now? Please look at this, this reaction, if you do this, what will happen? Zinc 2 plus plus 2 electron, this becomes faster and what will happen to this? Zinc going as zinc 2 plus plus 2 electron becomes slower. Agreed? Agreed or not agreed? Let us look at this one right, let us look at this equation right. If I provide more electrons, what will happen to this reaction? The forward reaction will be increasing, the backward reaction will be simple you know some normal chemistry concepts only nothing different right. So, by doing this that means, now the net current is going to flow am I right or not? 
So, if I am going to have an ammeter here, if I am going to have an ammeter here, I can measure the current when the current is going to flow. On this surface, earlier the rate of oxidation equal to rate of reduction, here the rate of reduction is more. So, there is going to be a net flow of electron in this direction like this, it goes like that only. So, the ammeter will start showing some values. So, there is going to be net current seen. Am I, do you agree or not? No, I think some of you have problems, ok. So, the current is going to increase. So, I am going to move from that to this, to this value, the current is now is increasing now. Agreed? Now, I am going to make it even more negative, what will happen? I make it let us say minus 0 0.963, what will happen? Yeah? The forward reaction will be faster, the reverse reaction becomes slower. So, the current will start increasing like that. Agreed? So, you find that we are going to follow like this. It is a good question. I come to that later actually, ok. It is a good, yes. Very important question. Is the straight line, is the slope is fixed? Variation, right? It is a good question. Is the straight line or not? It is, of course, we are, I put a log scale here. I come back to that answer. It is a good answer. I mean, it is a good question, right? So, you will also ask a question why not the slope be like this? Okay. They are right, I am going to answer all this because it is a mathematical equation we are going to derive from this. Okay. So, it happens like that. Now, on the other hand, I am going to now apply, okay. now I am going to apply, now what I am going to do? Now, second I am going to apply, let us say minus 0 0.663 volt. Please see here. I am applying minus 0 0.633 volt, huh? I am not applying plus 0 0.63, ok. Now, what will happen now? Now, this reaction will start moving faster, this becomes slower. That means, now I am going to get a current, ok, given by this. If I increase the voltage further, further. Do you follow or not? Please do not worry right now why I am writing like that, but at least conceptually do you agree that when I move the potential relatively positive anodic reaction occurs, relatively negative cathodic reaction occurs. That is what I want. Do not worry about this slope and all these things. All I want to say that ok, that ok, that how things really changing. Now, I am going to write this here as zinc going as zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons represent this and this is what is zinc 2 plus plus 2 electron gives as zinc here. Conceptually understand right. I have some value of potential, I move relatively positive. That means, I am going to remove electrons from the matter surface, right, is not it? When I am going to make it minus 0 0.63, what does it mean? I mean, the electrons are going to leave out of the system, right, because it is moving out system. That means, there is going to be oxidation. When I make it relatively negative, the electrons will move in, so there is going to be reduction process. So, depending upon that, the things are start moving and down like this. Please understand this is if you understand this, you understood corrosion full, you will have no problems in anywhere in understanding the electrochemical corrosion process at all. This is basic things. Please see here why I am saying it is important. I have started with the potential of minus 0 0.763, I moved to a value which is let us say let us say I have moved to a value, I give some value, let us say minus 0 0.563, ok. I moved to a value here, let us say minus 0 0.963, I am just giving some arbitrary value, do not worry about it, ok. At 0 0.63, I am sorry, 0 0.763, no oxidation, no reduction because same, I move up this oxidation, 
please look at the sign here the sign is negative here the sign is negative here i can have a sign negative and i can still have oxidation i can still have reduction so you don't have to change the sign in order to call it an oxidation reaction or reduction reaction otherwise the old convention european convention used to say e is negative it's reduction e is positive oxidation incorrect i can have okay a, a negative things here and still i can have oxidation i can have a negative over here and still i can have reduction if i put a equilibrium potential there is no oxidation no reduction takes place so it is positive negative has no meaning at all in this case to illustrate further if i take copper suppose i take copper what will be the value here what will be the value here for a copper plus point 337 right if you move out move sorry if you move up it is positive slightly move down still positive i can have oxidation and i can have reduction this is a important thing don't get carried away with the sign and tell there is oxidation there is reduction process no that is totally incorrect to attribute the sign for oxidation and reduction process so e is independent of convention it is the value that you determine from the from the equation that you get from here and please notice we said last time it's measurable just not only calculable i can measure it only thing is i have to measure with respect to a another reference electrode that's all it is okay you understood this actually any of you have any questions here please yeah for changing current does equilibrium stabilize again stabilize again no no that is called steady state what is the difference between a steady state and equilibrium steady state means there will be a drift slowly and then it becomes constant see so when you when you change the potential i understand the reaction rate will not jump immediately it will take some time but after some time it reaches a value a steady state value current will be flowing around yeah when you say equilibrium no oxidation no reduction steady state no it can be oxidation can be reduction but doesn't change with respect to time steady state means it's not changing with respect to time so don't confuse between equilibrium state and the steady state they are totally different at all okay they are not the same let us continue with this this is a important one you should continue we will we'll continue this spending some time on this okay now come back to this uh, this discussion now what happen if we consider tangent or unsteady state see i will tell you right now we don't bother because now we are trying to stand walk run then we going to take up faster okay people do calculate transients when you do research for examples these transients have meaning at all actually okay that probably we have time we'll talk about it transients do have meaning they are used in understanding the electrochemical interface but right now we are not going to talk about transients we are talking about steady state because that's only a state we can define very well right you can't define about it right otherwise transients have a meaning we do it electrochemical impedance spectroscopy all this we do that where the transients are being used okay right now we will not talk about that particular one let us let's talk about the difference between chemical reaction and electrochemical reaction what are the difference between these two metallurgy should tell chemistry guys should tell everybody should say actually right okay let me give a lead rate of chemical reaction okay what are the factors that affect the rate of a chemical reaction concentration temperatures huh? okay pressure is i can talk about temperature pressures activity 
order of reaction okay so the rate of a chemical reaction It is a function of what? Function of concentration, temperature, pressure, rate equation, right, is what happens, right. The rate equation is what you get used with, right. Let us look at rate of electrochemical reactions. What is this function of what? Can somebody guess now? We are reasonably now we have seen. Hmm? Depends on what? Yeah. So, it depends upon the concentration, temperature, pressure, and what? And potential. I can alter the rate of reaction by altering the potential. So, when you are talking about reaction kinetics, rate of corrosion for example, you talk about what is the concentration of species, what is the temperatures, what is the pressure, you are going to add one more dimension, what is that? Potential is going to be there and potential and current are interrelated. is not it? We have seen in the previous the previous uh, thing right. I will show you here please. The potential and current are interrelated. I have not completed the story here, but I just wanted to tell you that rate of reaction depends upon potential and potential and current are interrelated to each other ok. You talked about what happened to the change of concentration that will change ok. So, so that is the difference between a chemical reaction and the electrochemical reaction. Let us look at other things what difference between these two we have. Suppose I have hydrogen and oxygen I put them together do you think the water will form very easily? Why it does not form? I put take oxygen, I put some combination of uh, it will be explosion, but otherwise you just take hydrogen and oxygen put in a cylinder. The, the free energy change is is negative that is why we have water right, otherwise water will not be will not be there. So, the free energy change for hydrogen combining with water uh, I am sorry hydrogen combining with oxygen giving rise to water is negative right, but put oxygen and hydrogen together and it does not form water easily. Why? Why? People can ask question differently you know it is not a point. Why? You heard the concept called activation energy right. There is activation energy barrier unless you cross the activation energy barrier you cannot change. So, how do you cross the activation energy barrier in chemical reaction? Rise the temperatures. So, temperature is a catalyst kind of thing right or we add a catalyst you can do that. So, in the case of in the case of chemical reaction ok, we use temperature as a factor to control the reaction. In electrochemical reaction we use potential to work on the barrier. Corrosion does not occur just like that you apply more potential then only corrosion occurs otherwise the free energy change is negative only it does not happen. So, so we need to understand what is an equivalent of of activation energy barrier in electrochemical reaction ok. So, I am going to now talk about what they are ok. So, let us go into that concept of what it is. Now, we all know this is I yeah, I call it as a how do you use the term G E is a potential right I use this term G maybe I do not know 
let me distance A turning into B, there is a barrier for that and B coming to A, you have bigger barrier for that. So, this is all you guys know about it right. In electrochemical reaction also there is a barrier ok. What is happening in electrochemical reaction? Let us say zinc here goes into solution as zinc 2 plus ions it cannot simply come out, it is a lattice, it has to break the bond right. So, there is a barrier of activation from this to come over here, it is not exactly correct ok. So, there is a barrier it has to overcome ok. Unless you have this barriers overcome, the lattice zinc will not come to solution ok. And for that to overcome, we use what is called as the potentials. I come back to this concept here ok. Let us see what it is E versus log i like this. This is true for most of the electrochemical reaction be it uh, H plus H, zinc, zinc plus, copper 2 plus copper whatever and this is your oxidation and this is sun and what is this? This is your I naught what is this? This is your equilibrium potentials am I right. Now, please notice If let us say, let us say the reaction is, let us say the reaction I given here, I just change the reaction here, right? What is you can use any reaction you want, right? I use this, if this is the equilibrium. What is the reaction here? Can you tell me? Yeah, quick. What reaction for this is the equilibrium that I am representing. What is the reaction here? Hydrogen evolution reaction. I want you to speak. What is this one? This is, this is hydrogen oxidation reaction takes place. Now, if I want to increase rate of reaction, suppose you know rate of you know, suppose I want to increase rate of reaction to this, I need to move the potential from this point to this point. Am I right? I have to move this potential here. If it is the equilibrium state, I call it a 0 0 if you want it ok. If it is a standard state, you call it 0 0. Now, please look at I moved from this one to this one in order that the reaction takes place of my own rate I want it. If you want to increase it, I move further, I move further, I need further. I want to oxidize it, I move up, I move up, I move up ok. Please look at as I move down, down like that, what happens? The reaction becomes either oxidation or it becomes reduction and the electrode is now set as now the electrode is polarized. What is new polarization? Yeah, net now earlier it was, it was just it is not any anyway character at all it is simply both are forward now, it is polarized. If I what means if I move down, it becomes a cathode. If I move up, it becomes a anode. So, it is now polarized. So, that means the electrode is now polarized ok. So, and this is called as polarization. A deviation from the equilibrium condition is called as polarization ok. That is polarization means that means, do you want to say the concept polarization means deviation from
the equilibrium potentials is called as polarization. Anybody has a problem? Okay. Let me move further into this diagram, okay, the concept now. Let us move further into this. Let us draw this diagram fresh again. Okay. I move to this value and this is called as eta ok. Ok. So, eta equal to over potentials. Eta is a over potential right. This a term is called a over potentials. And what is this one? This is called as E applied. And what is this potential called? It is E equilibrium potentials. Okay. So, eta is equal to E applied minus E equilibrium potential. Please remember this equation. Huh? If you are confused with the equation, you will have a problem. Okay. Let me see here. Now, for an anodic reaction, for an anodic, what will be the eta? Will it be positive or negative? positive right great for cathodic is equal to negative understood because this is the cathodic side this is your anodic this is the cathodic Now, you will ask question, you have been asking question before, what is this? This is a slope, I call them as beta a, this is a slope, I call them as beta c. So, beta c will be cathodic slope but I am going to use cathodic, please use the term Tafel slope A is equal to anodic Tafel slope. It use I use the T here capital here, huh? the name of the person right. He, he found this relationship in the year 1905, he got this relationship actually. He did an experiment, ok. He did an experiment, he got this similar trend, he measured the slope, At that time we called a slope to recognize his contribution we call that we call that slope as the tafel slopes. So, the tafel slope now defines the rate at which the reaction occurs am I right or not ok. The slope is equally important right. 
now you can now use this he has also derived the equation eta anodic equals to plus eta a logarithm of i upon i naught eta cathodic minus beta c log i upon i naught. See you guys are all now good in mathematics right, you should be able to see how this can be derived. It is a simple linear equation right, nothing more right, because you know this is your i naught right, the Tafel slope you know that right. Now, this is the, the difference that you have here. So, you define this eta. So, i at any given eta, i at any given eta can be given by i naught if I know the tapel slope of this. These are called as tapel equations. Because see, here beta is what beta is a negative slope right that is why they put yeah ok. Slope is negative. So, you have minus beta and log i upon i naught. Now, what is beta? Can I take it out? What is beta? Beta is equal to 2.3 naught 3 hot t by alpha um, yeah n and yeah ok. Now, what is alpha equal to transfer coefficient or also called as symmetry coefficient. Generally, normally alpha is equal to 0.5. I will spend a minute on this ok. Let us take this it is not a good diagram ok, but I just made it ok. This energy right versus the reaction coordinate right it is called reaction coordinate or distance reaction coordinate. This is let us say this is let us say zinc 2 plus uh, zinc here ok zinc uh, zinc let us say zinc 2 plus. Let us look at this one. If the guy has to move from zinc has to move from here to this See, I am de describing this, na? I am describing this like this, right. What is this? The zinc, zinc 2 plus, this guy goes back and forth like that, right. Zinc has to move from here to this is much easier, it is because the slope is less, but for zinc 2 plus to come up here is going to be more difficult. That means, what is here alpha is given as This is let us say um, x, this is y. Now, alpha, alpha for what? Alpha for zinc to go as zinc 2 plus is given as ok, x 
factored by x plus y equal to alpha. Now, for zinc to come out, what happens? For zinc to come out, this is similarly and let us say some other alpha for zinc 2 plus to move towards zinc, it is going to be what? It is going to be y upon x plus y. I think you guys would have seen it before, ok. That means, this is much easier. Now, alpha is alpha is smaller here, right? Alpha is smaller, so this is going to be bigger. So, r I would say this is equal to 1 minus alpha. Can I say this? If this is alpha, this is equal to 1 minus alpha. You can able to get this alpha plus 1 minus alpha is equal to 1, ok. It is going to be there. This is you guys would have studied in many chemical equations and all actually. So, alpha and is what is really means. Please notice, please notice very clearly here, ok, ok. If alpha is going to be small, beta is, uh, yeah, if, if alpha is going to be small, beta is going to be is large actually, ok. So, you can relate this to much more easier in this case actually, ok. Can I move or you have any questions in this, this case, ok. Is beta a characteristics property? It is ok. Let us look at what is alpha. Alpha depends upon the hill that moves here. Beta is equal to 2.303 RT by alpha n f. What is n? The number of electrons involved 2, 3 whatever. F is a Faraday, is a temperature or is a gas constant. So, beta is a characteristic property. And what? so is I naught. Huh? And so is I naught. I naught. Yeah, I naught also has a property. Right, because the guy moved going to move right. Alpha means the guy goes you know left and right, right. So I naught is characteristics of a given system. Okay, it is very important. In fact, you will see later, I naught is going to decide what is the rate of corrosion, more or less. If I naught is small, corrosion rate is small. If I naught is more, corrosion rate is going to more. We will we'll see later. Okay, right now. I want you to get a clarity in terms of the electrochemical equations that is uh, dictating the kinetics of that actually ok. That is that is what uh, you should be really knowing ok. So, this is so far we we understood ok excuse me um, the equations. Now, can can somebody um, somebody you know able to tell whatever you have discussed so far you know. What do you what do you what is what is you what is the what you understood actually? What have you understood in the discussion we had so far? Anybody? See, in order that an electrochemical reaction to occur, either oxidation or reduction, there has to be an over voltage, over potentials. You have to deviate from the equilibrium potentials, and that is also called as a polarization. If we increase the over voltage, if we increase the eta. What will happen to rate of reaction? It will automatically increase. If you look at the table equation there, ok. If, if beta is more, I is going to be more. If beta is less, I is going to be less. So, higher the eta, higher is the polarization, the higher is going to be the rate of reaction taking place. So, this is the, the most important aspect of the, the electrochemical reaction electrochemical kinetics ok. And you have any questions so far? Um, we can we, we can clarify this and then move, move further. No questions? 
when concentration is changed then equilibrium potential also changes so does i not changes with changing concentration of ion corresponding to new equilibrium potential you need to have yeah you need to have these values either you should theoretically calculate or you should experimentally measure the anode values they are required very much the same that equilibrium potential will change with change in concentration the anode also will change because let us look at this now see the chemical reaction the electrochemical reaction the lot of commonalities that you have ok. Suppose go back to this suppose if these are going back and forth right how do you determine the rate of this reaction r equal to k into concentration it is a first order reaction all right. If r is changing I mean it has to change if the k is changing and c is changing. If r is changing then i is going to change. So, the exchange condensity will change automatically, but only thing will happen is the exchange condensity for a forward reaction is equal to backward reaction that is not going to change. The, di the difference between i and i naught is i naught there is no net oxidation or reduction, but when it is i it is either oxidation or reduction process yeah i naught will change if you change the concentration of species, if you change even temperature things will change ok. So, but all it means it is an equilibrium and no oxidation no reduction takes place ok. So, I am not going into details actually some of you are more interested please go through the book Bakris and Reddy modern electrochemistry all these are given in details, but since it is not electrochemistry course. I am not talking. So, I am discussing electrochemistry to the extent that you can understand corrosion better. There is no way a comprehensive treatment of electrochemistry ok, it is not at all ok. But those who are interested please read that book or you can read the book Buchanan right that is also a good book I referred in the in, in, the, in the beginning of my my um, first class and I said what are the books I am referring you can refer that book as well. But Bakris and Reddy I would call it it is a you know it is it is it is like a bible or Geda whatever we can call it ok. The ultimate in terms of in my view in understanding clarifying your concepts or you can also read by Baud. Baud is another you know big guy in the field of electrochemistry ok. Now, so, let us now look at these things and um, now what I am going to look at here is now what ok. So, what you should know? You should know one the equilibrium potential calculations you should know what is over voltage. you should know that is E voltage now you should know how eta is related to I. We have not done much so far we have just only you know made only three concepts clear to us actually hopefully they are clear. Actually, there is one more if you are really more keen I will write the equation here and those of you um, you want to uh, uh, understand better a better equation to 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 represent this electrochemical kinetics is I is equal to I naught exponential 1 minus um, alpha eta n f by r t minus exponential minus beta I am sorry minus minus alpha 
theta n f pi r t. What is this? Please look at i. What is i here? I is the net current. density ok and this corresponds to I anodic current, this corresponds to I cathodic ok. That means, I is given as I anodic always minus I cathodic. these are uh, the equations we have and this is called as Butler Walmer equation and I am not going to discuss this in details, but those of you who are interested can read the book and understand it or if time permits we will discuss this during the somewhere uh, in the middle of the course we will discuss this ok. okay. Let me just before I proceed let me just clarify this. So, you should be in a position to calculate the current density right. Can you can you solve the numericals if I give some values based on the Tafel equations, would you be able to do that ok. So, you will have some numericals to to, um, to understand these concepts ok and uh, probably we the coming week we will give you these numericals actually no? ok. Let us go to the electrochemical reaction more in details. Let me take say steel say in sea water ok steel in steel sea water. What is the corrosion? Now, you will have iron going as Fe 2 plus. Now, we also have oxygen, water, right. Is it clear? Is it is it right? You guys are aware of this equation. Let us write pictorially here. The sea water, it has some oxygen there, dissolved oxygen somewhere, all the places. Iron corrodes. The electrons are liberated here. What will be the cathodic reaction? This is the cathodic reaction, this is cathodic, and this is the anodic reaction. The anodic reaction occurred, the cathodic reaction to occur, the oxygen has to migrate from here to this place. It or not. Similarly, the iron has to migrate from here outside has to migrate from here, you cannot just accumulate it there right. So, what are the reaction here? What are the processes involved here? The process involved here are at the interface there is a charge transfer. What does it mean charge transfer? Iron becomes Fe 2 plus, trips the two electrons out, the oxygen moves here and 
exchanges electrons it becomes yh minus. So, charge transfer occurs at the interface. But for that to occur, you have to have the migration of this. Right. So, to put it simply, some species, okay, maybe it is a, a negative a negative charge or a positive charge. They move here. And what happens? Then what happens here? Charge transfer. And this charge transfer, you see the relationship now. What is the relationship here? It is the Kaffer relationship. What you have seen before is a charge transfer is a relationship. And what is this? This is your diffusion control. So, the over voltage we talked about so far it is eta A and eta C, they are all called as charge transfer over voltage. They are called as charge transfer over voltage, ok. They are called as charge transfer over voltage or over potential, whatever you call it over potential. So, that is the potential required for metal to get oxidized or reduced what happens. Now, we have one more thing. So, we need to know how these are happening at all. If you do this, then you have a complete understanding of electrochemical corrosion process right. You have already seen how the relation between the potential and current exists at the interface. Now, we also know that if the ions have to take charge they have to move from the bulk to the interface. So, we need to know the governing equation for that. So, what is the governing equation for that ok. So, that you can completely define in electrochemical corrosion reaction understood ok. So, we are going to look at this now and see how we can understand that yeah. What about the cemented present in the steel? Oh ok. Uh, well, it is a good question ok. Right now, we are not talking in terms of microscopic processes on the surface. We are looking at a macroscopic. I gave steel as an example here, so that you get an idea about how the steel corrodes in the sea water ok. You can take an iron you want ok, you can take nickel you want actually ok. The idea of giving here is that the oxygen you know I, I gave oxygen here, I did not put sulfuric acid ok. I have given you a problem I think I have not given it, I think T s I have not given it actually ok. So, the difference between an acid sea water containing or exposed to air is that the solubility of oxygen here is what? It is about 6 ppm to 7 ppm, maybe 8 ppm, something like that. So, they are not going to be easily available on the surface, they have to migrate from here. The corrosion now depends upon what? Depends on not this, it depends upon how quickly the oxygen ion, oxygen molecule migrate to the interface. If they do not migrate, then the reaction will not occur. This equation is of no use. So, I am talking in reference to why you should care this one. Please look at this, this is in series, please look at this in series right, this move like this. If this is faster and this is slower, the rate determining reaction is going to be this right. 
if this is the slowest the fastest now this is not going to control this is going to control i mean i do not know how jumping at all ok. This would be easier for you it is it's, it's a series process right. You assume that transport is much slower I apply more over voltage right I apply more over voltage. Let us go to this let us go to this reaction ok. I apply more over voltage the current is increasing right increasing, but current will increase only when if the species are available for reaction. If they are not available what happens? You only increase the voltage nothing happens right. So, this current will increase only when your species to accept electrons or release electrons if they are not there. So, that means, you have a transport process and then it is getting accepted here right. So, it is a coupled reaction. The transport is an integral part of electrochemical process for any chemical processes also you know there is a transport happening at all. So, I did not use sulfuric, sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid the concentration of H plus ions are huge H plus move very fast you never have diffusion control process, but oxygen is less soluble and so in this case the transport becomes very important. We will see this later when you talk about corrosion of steel in sea water how important these equations are. These equations are very important when you talk about corrosion of steel in sea water, corrosion of stainless steel in sea water they are very important. Why? Because that is governed by this transfer process that is why we are now trying to understand the equation governing the, the transport of ions in the solution at all ok. Am I making this point clear to you ok. So, we look at this now. Transport there are two laws governing a transport what are the laws? I am talking diffusion. What are the governing laws of diffusion? Fixed law, you cannot forget that. Huh? They are the great guys. Hmm? So, there are fixed law, the one is called fixed first law, second is a fixed second law. What is the difference between a first law and second law? First law is steady state and second law is a, a non steady state. So, we will not get into non steady state, it is very complex, ok. So, they are useful when you are going to do research electrochemically you solve that also, but I am not going to use this in the class. So, the dis so the diffusion processes starts with the fix fixed law you cannot start from that. What is the fixed law it says? Fixed law says J is equals to minus D DC upon DX. right. What is uh, J is a is a flux the reaction rate is given in terms of moles per centimeter square area per second am I right reaction rate all of you guys will be knowing. What is D? diffusivity what are the unit of this length square divided by time isn't it ok what is dc concentration difference dx is what is the between two points right ok between the two points where the diffusion occurs Let us define the electrochemical system. Okay. 
now you have the bulk a concentration ok and what is this concentration here it is a surface concentration right. This is a bulk concentration this is the surface concentration and assume that the diffusion distance is this is the assume this is your x for example. What do you have here? Now, can you convert flux into current? Can you, can you not? What is the unit of flux? Mole centimeter per second. How do you convert this? No, J is equal to. How to convert this? J multiplied by can you? Can you or can you not? Is it right or not? No? Go back. So, what happens? I is equal to minus d dc upon dx n into f. Is it is it difficult equation or? easy equation. See if you know the number of moles can you not convert that into see this number of moles per centimeter square per second is a rate no it is a rate right it is a rate of reaction. So, you how do you convert that into current is the equation correct or incorrect so, can somebody point out correct how do you get this please look at your notes ok. See that is why you see we are now making a slow progress ok and they are not difficult, but if you are not uh, you know following up completely you might find it very difficult to understand what it is, it is simply very simple equations only ok. So, it is possible for us to relate the flux to this. So, you we will find out what is called as, as the governing equation for what is called as a diffusion process and how the diffusion is related to the current. See what is for example, I take H plus ions, I start moving from here to this, what does it mean? Is it only mass is moving or something else is moving? Hmm? Charge moving, when charge is moving what does it mean? Current is moving right. You try to try to understand they are not neutral molecules right. So, if these ions are moving they are carrying the charges and so the current is going to flow accordingly depends upon what direction the ions are moving and which ions are moving positive or negative right. So, the flux is related to current ok. So, far the flux was related to what in terms of moles and all this now we are going to relate the flux current. Why I am interested? Because I need to know what is the diffusion rate of oxygen to find out the corrosion rate otherwise I do not know ok. How do I calculate this? So, I need so I am really worried or I am bothered I would say that I need to know what happens to the corrosion of steel in, in water having 5 ppm oxygen there or 100 ppm for example if the diffusion coefficient of species changed what happens 
100 is going to change. So, what is the basic equation for that? So, these are the basic equations ok. So, when I say I can calculate corrosion rate, I can able to calculate corrosion rate by knowing all these things. They are not difficult. I think you guys have done it in earlier subjects at all actually ok. So, please brush up your things when you come back and we will see this in the in the next class ok. Please understand we are now slowly complicating the subject. Why? I talked about so far zinc oxidation, zinc reduction by one one table equation, maybe two table equations right. But the actual corrosion process what is happening? Zinc is getting oxidized, H plus is getting reduced. So, there are going to be four TAFL governing equations. Am I right or not? So, please understand ok, but they are very simple, but there are two equilibria we are talking about in corrosion. One is zinc is in equilibrium with zinc ions, H plus is in equilibrium with the H. So, we talk about only one equilibrium of zinc having two TAFL equations. Now, there I am going to talk about four TAFL relationship because one equilibrium for H plus and H, other one for zinc and H plus. So, solving that equation becomes more difficult unless you understand it ok. You please do understand it ok. Get that things clear to your mind it is not difficult again again I repeat, but please look at the equations and then try to understand what these equations are actually ok. So, I mean like solving any mathematical problem, but you should know the physics behind this governing equations at all ok. So, please come prepared uh, for the next class next class I can assure you is going to be more complex, more complex and more more complex ok, but they have a very common simpler understanding of the electrochemical concepts that I can say ok. So, that is not difficult, but complex ok. So, please uh, um, come prepare for the next class I will uh, I will really appreciate that. So, we will close uh, today's discussion just introducing the relation between diffusion and the current ok. Thank you.